I'm going to wait to buy my EV until there are enough EV public chargers out there. I'll wait until the infrastructure is better developed. You must have heard these, surely. You've also probably heard there are already far too many public chargers. We actually don't need more than this at this moment in time. So are the long queues. What's it really like out there? The government, the charging companies, yeah, they love to boast and rightly so. Because this month, September, the UK has somewhere around 85,000 public EV charging points. It's a 27% jump on this time last year and as many EV plugs as petrol and diesel pumps in the UK. With well, a network of ultra rapid chargers, the really fast ones you need on a long journey, that's grown by over 50% in just the first half year alone. So what's it like? What's life like for an EV driver out on the road needing to charge up at one of the largest collections of high powered chargers in the entire country? Talk about Exeter Moto Services. I mean, this place is supposed to be a flagship, a beacon of the electric future we were promised. What do we find? I'm Dave, and in the run up to 2030, when more of us will be driving EVs than today, we're going to figure out what's really going on. And I promise you, it's probably not what you think. So here's the mission. It's an 800 mile round trip, Preston to Cornwall and back again over two days. And one of the stops is here at Moto Exeter on the M5. And there's a very specific reason I'm here. This isn't your average motorway service station. According to Moto, this is one of the largest high powered charging sites in the UK with a staggering 68 ultra rapid charging bays. Now if any place was designed to make queuing a thing of the past, this place should be it. On paper, it's an EV driver's paradise. And look, the UK's charging network is still expanding like crazy. An additional 12 bays were added here just recently. As I reported earlier on, August 2025, we'd hit over 85,000 public chargers in total. Now, although this is the same number as charger plugs, as petrol and diesel pump nozzles, everyone will be shouting, yeah, but you take so much longer to charge than we do to fill up. And I totally agree, you do. But then there are only a tiny 1.6 million EVs on the roads compared to 36 million ICE cars. That's 20 times as many corrected for the number of EVs on the road. And that number in the UK is only growing at about 2 million a year. So the total number of new car sales that we reach each year. It's going to take a while, but in the meantime, we win hands down. And yeah, don't forget, most of us charge mainly or exclusively at home. So not all of the 1.6 million EVs actually use these public charges much if at all, many EV drivers have never used a motorway services like this one. So in reality, EV chargers massively outnumber petrol nozzles and the speed is also changing for the better. Once we had to wait the best part of an hour to get a full charge and now modern EVs can add over 250 miles in about 17 minutes. And the next gen are likely to speed that up still further. Well, companies like GridServe now claim they have over 1,500 charging bays. That's offering fast, rapid and ultra-rapid chargers covering the vast majority of the motorway network. Tesla, meanwhile, claim that they have over 1,500 ultra-rapid only chargers nationwide. The raw numbers are impressive. They paint a picture of a country that is more than ready for the electric transition. They suggest that range anxiety and charger hunting probably relics of the past. The data tells you wherever you are, a fast, reliable charger is just round the corner. So what actually happened when it pulled into Exeter Moto Services on a busy Friday afternoon at peak times? 68 ultra rapid charger bays split between GridServe and Tesla. Queues should not have been possible, but that's the theory. Well, what's the reality? Well, no significant queues. Now, it was busy beyond belief, but there were no long queues ever while I was there. Now, we do actually need to split the charges between the CPOs, that's GridServe and Tesla, both having 
uh, well, that's 36 of those 32 chargers. For GridServe, they were running 24 of the 350 kilowatt single bay chargers alongside the 12 brand new dual bay 360 kilowatt chargers, all working maximum flat out capacity. On occasions, the all, all the bays were completely full, all 36 of them, but I didn't see anyone queuing for more than just a couple of minutes, nobody. The turnaround was most efficient. During my filming here, I saw the chargers gradually becoming quieter. Not quiet, but noticeably quieter. And this is the stuff you never hear about in those glossy press releases where they go hunting for cues for their pre-printed doom and gloom headline stories. 36 ultra-rapid chargers were coping very well. Just behind them were 32 Tesla V3 chargers, all 250 kilowatt, and these were coping far better. At no time did I see a queue, and even saw a couple of Model 3s towing one a boat, one a trailer, making full use of the pull-through bays here. So each of those was taking up two bays, still no queues. So what's actually happening? <clears throat> Now, I do have to own up, this was a visit of around one hour on one specific day at a time when the motorways were absolutely heaving. I witnessed massive multiple queues on the M5 up to 10 miles long heading north from Exeter. Luckily, I was heading south. So definitely, this was a really busy day and I only stayed for around an hour or so. Just enough for a lunch, some filming and a full charge to 90%. So, cannot state with certainty that 20 minutes before I got here, there were not long queues. I saw no state, no, no sign of them at all, no evidence they were there. And I continuously make checks on the uh, GridServe app. I see no evidence of regular queues either. But of course, this is just one specific location within a large city. Very close by, there are a good number of other EB public chargers. Didn't have time to check them all on this visit, but I did find more GridServe. I found Instavolt, MFG and Sainsbury's uh, Smart Charge really close by. Plus, I did specifically visit two other Tesla open to all chargers. One was at Darts Farm, 2.7 miles away. One at the Tesla Service Centre, 4 miles away. Right, Darts Farm was really interesting as they had excessively long bays with the charger in the middle, making the really short V cable, the three cables, no issue at all. You just slide into the bay until the charger port on your EV was directly alongside a charger, it fitted perfectly. Now over at the Tesla Centre, there's no such problem because these were the V4 chargers with the really long cables, plus the screen and the contactless. I suspect they make all service centres open to all because while you're waiting for your EV to charge, or better than to just wander into the showroom and see the latest offering while taking your complimentary coffee. They probably make a sale or two over the year. So as a summary, the UK EV public charging network is, in my opinion, more than adequate for the number of EVs we have on the road today. Like every single business anywhere in the UK, probably the world, go at the wrong time and you can find a queue. But we accept them when we queue up at the bank or the post office to pay at the supermarket tills, local chippy, for a seat in your fast food restaurant at peak times or everything on a bank holiday weekend. No business that wants to stay in business would build their shop or store so absolutely huge that you can never, ever, ever get a queue. Best advice, just try, if possible, to avoid those absolute peak times, but if you can't, just wait. Well, in conclusion, a detailed check of the empty charges we regularly film at motorway services or at Zest or Osprey in Liverpool or multiple locations outside McDonald's or Burger King restaurants reveals that we already have more than enough EV public chargers. They're not being used to their full extent. It's mainly because people absolutely do not want to charge at many of them as they're just too dear. If it's a one-off, I personally don't mind. You see, I can charge at my local car park for free, maximum two hours. But when I take the grandkids to the beach, that car park's at least a fiver. I can buy four ice creams in my local Tesco for about two quid. But on the beach, it'll be a fiver each. Likewise, these EV uh, charging prices should be looked at in that context. If you normally charge at home or away from home, but very much cheaper, just swallow the silly prices you find out on the road. In the annual EV charging bill, it'll make barely a blip. Oh, by the way, if this is the price you're always paying at home, what is wrong with you? 
85 pence is a silly price. So what's the future? Well, it's not as simple as just build more chargers. We, we need smarter chargers that manage power dynamically to ease the load on the grid. We also need low power destination chargers at really sensible prices. So when you do have to park up near the beach and pay a fiver, the least you can do is give your EV a charge while being ripped off by the local donkey ride consultant. Or pack out the retail parks with slower chargers. So again, while shopping or eating your lunch, Lunch. I know which my wife takes longer to do. Far longer. <laughs> far, far longer. Well, at least you can follow around smirking that you're getting a charge. The sacrifices I have to make. Above all else, we need better EV driver education. I see far too many people lining up to spend 89 pence per kilowatt hour when two miles away they could be paying 46p. That's half price. For the exactly same electricity. Plus, they make much better butties at Darts Farm. They need to learn that while almost all petrol is the same price, give or take a few pence, electricity isn't. Right, we need a culture shift in charging etiquettes, and we need real penalties also for hogging bays. But we also need to remember it's no good moaning that there are no rapid or ultra-rapid chargers near you at a sensible price. You should have sorted your own cheap home or public charging as soon as you got your first EV. Rapid and ultra-rapid charges are generally for road trips, unless, of course, you live somewhere like Manchester or Bristol, where your cheapest chargers might well also be the ultra-rapids. The UK has more than enough chargers for the vast majority on the vast majority of days. Unfortunately, we don't live our lives in averages. We live them in peaks and troughs. And right now, far too many of us head there at peak times because it's convenient. Now, I never did understand how queuing up is in any way convenient. But unless we change and get educated, the success of the EV transition won't be measured by the number of charges we have, but by whether a family can get to their holiday destination and back without having to spend half an hour of their journey stuck in a queue. I did it. I didn't charge, so once again, I can continue my unbroken record of not having ever queued for over three years. And I drive an awful lot. Well, on a final note, I must apologise to the husband of the young lady who came over for a selfie in Cornwall Services on Saturday. She told me how much you always hoped to meet me on one of my less than frequent trips all the way down to see family in Cornwall. I suspect that photo is going to be dangled in front of you for some time to come. Anyway, back to the video. I'd love to know what you think about charging. Is this your experience? Tell me your charging good or your nightmare stories in the comments down below. It's a conversation we need to have. And don't forget to subscribe for some more deep dives into the reality of our electric future heading towards 2030. So until next time, I'm Dave.